everybody, I'm Adriana and welcome back to my channel. Today I will be sharing with you all my third trimester recap. I have some notes in my handy dandy mom <laughs> notes book um, that I collected over my pregnancy, specifically my third trimester. I do have a first and second trimester recap videos already up so you can watch those if you are new here. Um, also, hey, this is like my first time talking to you and like I guess the present. Um, I am a mom. I have a child. Crazy. He is napping with his dad right now, um, which is why we just we just got to do this. We just go talk and make use of this nap time while we can because it is precious. Um, sorry for the funky lighting. There's it's doom and gloom outside right now. It's like about to rain. So this is what we're working with. My birth vlog is already up. It's a lengthy one. It is not graphic but very real like I show you I take you along for a lot of the process um so you can go watch that if you're interested that is a whole story in of itself um but today we are specifically going to be focusing on my third trimester for reference my due date was December 29th 2023 yeah December 29th 2023 and my baby came January 3rd 2024 um so I'm gonna take you basically for the start of my third trimester all the way to go time um and i'm not really gonna talk about what my labor and delivery experience was like um if you're interested in that i can talk about that in a different video or just watch the birth vlog i we talk a lot about that um um in real time in that vlog so all right so we're gonna talk about just some of the symptoms i experienced and things like that i'm literally just gonna read my notes to you so all right so at the very beginning of my third trimester um by the way very much so tmi like if you're watching this video just expect to hear about bodily functions okay so first things up um discharge still going strong um I was waking up at night to pee religiously throughout the majority of my pregnancy that was not a thing that really bothered me too much um but once my third trimester began we were at the bathroom often and then as we got closer and closer to go time um I was waking up a lot at night to go use the restroom and the thing is too is like the amount of pressure you feel when you have to pee is so 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 strong when you're pregnant it feels like your bladder is like the size of a pee um so it, it was it was intense um sleeping on my sides became very uncomfortable um at this point my hips would hurt a lot um and that did eventually lead me going to um, a chiropractor which i went to primarily to make the labor and delivery experience easier which was a recommendation by my mom just based on her birth with me um but spoiler alert i ended up having a labor delivery experience extremely similar to hers um so that's funny even though I did go to the chiropractor but um, I was hoping that that would kind of help the hip pain it didn't really help me at all um but it was an interesting experience so there's that um all right at first it helped a little bit but in the long term it just didn't really help very much but if the chiropractor works for you I love that for you so <laughs> great um all right so next I did not like the pregnancy pillow at all whatsoever like I personally like I'm so grateful that it was purchased for me um, and I was able to make that decision for myself but honestly like for any future pregnancies I will never use a pregnancy pillow. I did put a pillow between my legs like a regular old pillow but I hated how bulky the pregnancy pillow was. It made me super hot. I, I would get super hot at night when I was in my third trimester um, and it just wasn't comfortable to me. It just wasn't. Um, just too hot, too bulky, and I just found more comfort just throwing any old pillow between my legs. Um, don't ask me why that helped. The chiropractor said that um, that makes a lot of sense for that to have helped my hip pain um, when sleeping on my side. Some, she explained it to me. She showed me a whole little spine structure, but uh, I could not repeat it to you. So it was helpful. Um, another thing i loved eggs that was one thing throughout my entire pregnancy but especially so in my third trimester eggs were the most delightful thing in the world to me i could eat them as a midnight snack like scrambled eggs hard-boiled eggs the whole thing the whole shebang i loved it um around 27 to 28 weeks icy slushies just sounded so good um that cinnamon toast crunch slash cereal in general was god's gift um and then i began baby shower prep slash registry formation um Okay, I began baby shower prep 
and registry formation was a big stressor for me i really hated making my registry it was just so stressful it just felt like nothing you picked was right if you didn't pick the most expensive thing then you were doing wrong by your baby like it just i didn't like it i did not enjoy building a registry i used tiktok a lot for recommendations and reviews to kind of help narrow things down but at the end of the day really i looked at the people around me who were pregnant and i looked at their registries and i was like okay um so for me that was just not a fun thing it was more stressful and it was fun um but now that i'm on the other side of actually used a lot of the things that i received and bought things that i didn't know i wanted or needed i will 100 percent be making a video that is like my baby registry's favorites and regrets um, that's actually probably the video I'm most excited to make now being postpartum um, because there are so many products that I'm like I could have gone without this I think this is trash <laughs> and then there are so many products that I'm just like I wish I put this on my registry or I'm so glad I put this on my registry so um, I'm excited to share that um, and this was all at about like 27 ish weeks and yeah, 27 weeks. All right, so 28 weeks. Um, Robert built the crib, who is my husband. Um, and then on October 9th, we got so, so, so sick. Um, we are wedding videographers. And so, you know, while we try our best to, you know, stay away from, keep a respectable distance between ourselves and the couple and guests, so that we don't pick anything up sometimes it's just gonna happen that's just the nature of working in events and uh, we got really sick at one wedding um and my husband got over it in a couple days i was sick for three weeks so your immune system is just trash <laughs> during pregnancy so um if i could recommend anything to you it is be so safe like be absurd amounts of careful wear a mask i wish i did at that wedding um mind you we didn't get covid i literally it was just a cold that i could not shake um because my immune system was just shy from being pregnant um literally was had was sick for three weeks um i had exhaustion body pain sore throat and congestion um and i couldn't take anything for it really um i mean there are some things that i could take but just wasn't helpful um all right, moving on. 29 weeks. Um, I went to see Taylor, Taylor Swift, the Eras Tour movie, and I don't know what happened, but had violent vomiting that night. That was the, I had nausea throughout my first trimester. It went away when I entered my second trimester. And for some reason, this very specific night, I just tossed my guts. I don't know if that's pregnancy related or I had bad popcorn or what, um, but I specifically remember that night very clearly because wow it was it was violent um all right 30 weeks um i went to a halloween costume party and my husband and i went as pacha and chicha from the emperor's new groove i will insert pictures here um i had no voice the next day still feeling poorly and that's in regards to being sick um 30 weeks five days i had my first glucose test um i did a 50 gram fresh test at home that my midwife gave to me um i took it before i left the house and then by the time that i went to her office she was able to draw my blood um and have that sent to the lab um i didn't think it tasted too bad um the fresh test is supposed to be less intense than regular glucola um so that was fine taste wise it was just a really really sweet lemonade like it doesn't taste good but it's not like terrible um however it did send me straight to the bathroom like i literally on the drive to my midwife i was like if we don't pull over at this wawa right now i am going to put my pants in this car um at the time i didn't know that that was caused by the by the drink itself but to spoiler alert i did have to take a second glucose test and that again did not react very well to my body so just a heads up that that's something that could happen to you um don't go on long drives where you know bathrooms will not be available so um she, th she drew my blood um at 30 weeks seven days so two days later i found out that i failed that test um and had to schedule the three hour test to confirm that it was not gestational diabetes um the cutoff for normal was 135 um equal to or less than that and i was at 149 i was super bummed about this um because 
that had I been diagnosed with gestational diabetes that would have sent me to a high-risk doctor um I would no longer have been able to have a home birth all of that um so that really bummed me out I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit um even though I took that three-hour test the next weekend there are some things that happened in between like my baby shower and I do want to tell you a lot about that um but basically the three-hour glucose test was scheduled for 7 30 a.m I tried to do it super early in the morning because obviously you have to go fasting and all of that um and then with it being three hours I just want to get it over with as early as possible um it was a hundred grams of glucola and this time it was so so sweet um I didn't have any problems getting it down like drinking it even though it was like terrible like disgusting it was a terrible it was just disgusting um I didn't have any problems drinking it my problems came after drinking it um so basically just for some insight into the three hour glucose test um I had my blood drawn four separate times um now unfortunately for me um my veins are a little funky so this arm which you're not ever gonna be able to tell on the camera but my veins are you know standard right in the middle easy to draw from this arm um it's not easy right in the center it kind of goes along the side um so unfortunately for me they drew blood from this arm three times mm -hmm, three of the four um so i looked like a drug addict um <laughs> leaving that place and for the next couple days i looked bruised up um i felt faint um pretty immediately after drinking the drink um I almost threw up in the parking lot multiple times I literally my plan was to have my the the quest diagnostics that I had my test at super close to our house my plan was to have my husband drop me off and then pick me up back up I brought my computer I brought my iPad like I was ready to camp out here get some work done I felt like such garbage um that I did not want him to leave me he did not leave me um because I literally um I felt faint almost threw up in the parking lot I was so tired I took naps in between that's how bad I felt um I it sent me to the bathroom again thankfully we were in a Publix plaza and I went to the bathroom at Publix um and basically the rest of the day had I known then that that how it was going to make me feel I would have blocked off my entire day to doing nothing um because that is essentially what happened I got home and I did nothing for the rest of the day um so everybody reacts very differently to this test again taking drinking it is the least of my problems it was afterwards that it just made me feel like straight up garbage um and that's not even including getting your blood drawn that many times um but that really sucked so that's my entire glucose test experience um so moving ahead a little bit i did pass that one um and my blood my blood sugar was still a little bit high um so leading up to that three hour test i like cut out carbs for that entire like week basically between them after my baby shower i have i had fun at my baby shower and then i cut out carbs after um and i don't know if that helped i don't know anything i just know that i was not at high risk so thankfully i ended up not having gestational diabetes um and I just did that as like a preventative measure to, to see if it would help. Um, and then I also started fasting way earlier in the night than I did the first time. So instead of fasting at around like my typical dinner time, I ate dinner, like I stopped eating at like five or four, you know what I mean? Um, just to kind of get it all out of my system then. So um, that's what I did. I ended up passing it. So that was good. Uh, but my blood sugar was still a little bit on the high side. So um, I just tried to be mindful throughout the rest of my pregnancy to just not eat a ton of carbs which I didn't really I, I wasn't really big on eating a ton of sugars and carbs anyways um that cinnamon toast crunch that I was talking about that I loved so much I did cut that out entirely for the rest of my pregnancy um this was also around the fall time and I was drinking apple cider a decent bit like not anything crazy um but I don't know I just thought maybe that stuff was contributing to it so just cut it out um and then i was good for the remainder of my pregnancy so that was my glucose test experience not the most positive um but we're gonna backtrack now a little bit and i'm gonna talk about my baby shower um and i'm gonna share a lot about my baby shower so my baby shower was october 28th i was 31 weeks and one day and um, we were very much bumping at this point um it was honestly a dream basically um the responsibility for the baby shower was on my mom and my mother-in-law um and 
wow like my mom put so much effort into the decor like DIYed so many things um, the theme was the hundred acre wood and I did the invitations myself I like DIY them I did them online and then I did all the stationery between my printer um, my Cricut all that fun stuff I just I love a good paper invite um, I just love it I think there's nothing more fun than receiving mail period <laughs> um, but especially a formal invitation in the mail and so I really wanted that to be a thing and so we had paper invites and we had it out in the back it looked like a dream it was magical so many people came out and it just made us feel so 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 loved let alone like our baby feel so loved and honestly it was I would say it was pretty close in amazingness to our wedding um especially because like now there's so many new people in our lives since we got married we've made so many new friends since we got married um like our community looks so different in such a beautiful way that and now since we've been married for like three years um like each other's family feels more like our family than it did at our wedding um so it just it was truly such an amazing experience it will be a highlight that i look back on for many 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 years and i just it was such a great time it was absolutely beautiful the weather was perfect my brother like catered all of the food um he's fresh out of culinary school and um him and my stepbrother made everything and prepared it for the party it was just it was awesome it was just such a dream um we got everything from our our, our wedding registry we got everything from our baby registry and more um which is just an incredible blessing like i can never be more grateful enough for that and it's amazing now looking back because he's here and the fact that like that whole party happened in his honor and now i know that he's here and who he is and he's using all these things it's just cool it's just cool to look back and be like that was for you you know what i mean so um it was just so fun at 31 weeks and four days it was halloween um so october 31st and robert built the stroller that we received um that my dad bought us um we have the mockingbird stroller so um so far i really really like it no complaints so far um and at this point i was starting to experience pretty bad back pain lower back pain specifically and hip pain was really starting to kick in at night um I was still working at this point so I really never stopped working um because we work from home so like on the at home part I really never stopped working we're finally getting a break now um if I can make any recommendations to anybody who is self-employed please responsibly and generously give yourself leave um I did not do that and I truly think that it made my postpartum experience all the more difficult um just for some context I have been dealing with postpartum depression and anxiety and I am in therapy for it and I highly think that a large part of it um has been influenced by just not giving us a break um so if you want to if you want a video on that and my experience with that I'm happy well not happy to make it because it's not a happy experience it was really 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 hard um like if I ever made like a fourth trimester video it'd probably be heavily um talked about in that um but it was it was just a really hard experience so if you are self-employed specifically please give yourself all the time in the world that's like the biggest thing I can say uh, but anyways what I mean by all that is physically working in person, meeting photo shoots and weddings. I was still doing them at this point. My last wedding was not until halfway through November. So basically a month and a half before I was due. Um, so I was still doing weddings and at this was the point where I started to feel pain at them. Um, so I was very grateful. This is my second to last wedding because I knew that the expiration date for me being able to do this physically was coming at 31 weeks and six days it was november 2nd oh this that's when i had my three-hour glucose test so um i shared you all of that at 33 weeks um my whole breast was becoming more pigmented not just my nipples so basically um throughout pregnancy my nipples got really dark i mean like really dark um to the point that now postpartum I've even noticed 
them getting lighter from how dark they were i have no idea the science behind that or why that happens but it happens like they got really really dark um but another thing on top of that was not just my nipples were getting dark but like the entire breast like the skin looked tanned almost and i definitely wasn't tanning but it looked tanner um than it should for being covered up most of the time so i thought that was interesting um my armpits were also getting darker um i started to develop the linea negra um which is that dark line that goes down your stomach i was honestly i thought i was never going to get it because throughout most of my pregnancy i didn't have it but at 33 weeks that started to show up um my hair was growing super well um and i started to not have to wash my hair for like two weeks like i don't know why it was it wasn't dry it just was not producing very much oil so um now my hair is super long um if you saw what my hair looked like when i first got pregnant it was much shorter than this and i've gotten a cut so um yeah the the pregnancy hair did indeed come through <laughs> um and it was nice like, having to wash it as often um but then again i'm the kind of person where i don't really have to wash my hair very often at all like right now we're sporting like two-week hair um, mind you we have reached the expiration date for that like i need to wash my hair but um yeah i, I still don't really have to wash it super frequently um sleeping was not comfortable at this point i was very much ready to even though i knew that sleep would be more difficult postpartum at least when i did get to sleep i wasn't in pain um after recovery from the c-section so um because that was painful um i don't wish i mean if you want to have a c-section then that is amazing for you you deserve to have that choice but the recovery was not easy it it was very painful um so once i was recovered from that then even though i may get less sleep than i did then at least it's good sleep <laughs> you know what i mean like people love to say oh just wait if you think sleep is bad now yada yada i'm like that's a load of garbage um because at least i'm not in pain and when i lay down in my bed i can lay however i want and i love that for me i was starting to need more naps again which was very much reminiscent of my first trimester which is where i was just like i needed a nap all the time i was so tired um and then at 33 weeks baby moves often especially after meals not much kicking but lots of pushing and rolling we called him a squirmy wormy a lot he was a quite the squirming kind of guy um it felt like he was swimming around in there a lot but it wasn't like jabs it just felt like a lot of rolling and movement um 33 weeks, four days, I had my second anatomy scan. Um, if you haven't watched my, I think it was my second trimester one, when I had my first anatomy scan, they saw that I had a low-lying placenta. It wasn't covering my cervix, but it was pretty close. So um, they, while everybody, my um, tech um, for the ultrasound, and then also my midwife, they were both fairly confident with where it was positioned that as my uterus grew, it would grow up with it. Um, but we needed to check anyways. So I ha I did have a second anatomy scan at 33 weeks and four days um, to make sure that it was in fact out of the way of my cervix so that baby could exit properly. If that wasn't the case, I would have had to have a, a scheduled C-section. Um, Thankfully, placenta did move up and out, and when they say moved, it just means like, it just, as your uterus expands, it kind of moves out of the way. Your placenta doesn't move, it just kind of shifts up as your uterus grows, um, and the baby was head down. Um, now, um, this anatomy scan was about an hour. Oh, this one, the sonographer was training another sonographer, so we learned so much, so much. It was so educational. Um, she really took her time because she was training this girl and kind of teaching her, and she was asking her questions of like, now what is this? What is that? What would you do here? And I was eating it up like she was apologizing for how long it was taking and I was like honestly am I uncomfortable laying down yes but I'm getting a full education and I get to see my baby longer than I thought I would so it was great I I loved it I learned so much um, my back started to hurt from laying down for so long but we got to see so much I did not care um, my sister and my husband went um, he was measuring pretty big um, she said that he had a big head and they estimated that he was five pounds and seven ounces already I don't believe that to be true um, because he was born at seven pounds 13 ounces 
I think. Um, so the math just isn't mathin' based on how much they say that a baby grows every week, um, especially with him being past due. But she said that he was big and she gave him a new estimated due date of December 22nd, which was also not true. Um, and I honestly wish that she didn't tell me the new estimated due date because even though I knew it was unlikely for him to come at that due date and that the more likely due date is the very first one you get, it gave me false hope, you guys. It gave me false hope. So I just wish I didn't hear it because then I was expecting him earlier when he indeed came um, a little after his due date. So I honestly wish I never heard that. Um, and it was cool because she used a teddy bear to kind of show us how he was positioned in there. Um, he was head head down hands by his face in a split with one foot pushing up by my ribs laying with his spine alongside my right side which actually ended up causing complications um with how he exited my body so i wish i knew that before um or like I, I wish i knew that that was going to cause issues before um as she showed us that he has already got hair on his head and he was in fact born with lots of hair uh, we saw his spine his belly the four chambers of his heart his femurs which she said were long so he's gonna be tall and that's pretty accurate for right now he measures pretty long um his skull and then that he was right up against my cervix um so that was my second anatomy scan ready ready Maybe at 30 something weeks. <laughs> Roll with me on coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Now we're gonna do You measure that? No, we already measured. We will never measure in. Okay. Is it okay if I just like move my hips a little Absolutely. here? Absolutely. That's just you know okay. lay on your back for a while. Is yeah, I know. Okay, there we go. Alright. Okay, now we're doing bladder, kidneys. So the trick is your transverse, right? You got head, cervical spine, right? Belly, heart, belly. Now, what do I see there? Bladder. Yes, bladder. Give me a better shot of right there. There. There's your bladder. Now, mm -hmm. okay. And now we're gonna look for the kidneys. So either we do coronal view because he's a big boy. So I see one kidney coming up. What? Where, point at it. Freeze. Show me the kidney. My phone does not have that no. storage, honey. Next note, um, which is a late note because this kind of happened earlier, but I couldn't exactly tell you when I did this. Um, but I got my breast pump through the insurance, um, and I ordered it through Aeroflow. I got the Spectra um, pump um and it came with so many classes which is really cool so if you didn't know that aeroflow does give classes i don't know if they're aeroflow that administers the classes but like the pump came with virtual classes that i could sign up for um i learned a lot about how everything in labor and delivery can affect breastfeeding and that was honestly so interesting and could not have been better <laughs> for what ended up happening for us because our labor delivery experience was different than what we were expecting which did impact feeding which kept him in the NICU longer so um having a little bit of a primer surrounding how everything that happens in your delivery experience can impact your breastfeeding journey was a very interesting highly recommend um and also I personally really like my spectra um breast pump it is um like a stationary breast pump like it's not a portable one um but i think it's very powerful it does a good job um and if i'm at home that's the one that i reach for um even though it sucks being like tied to it um i just think that it's, it's very effective so um there is that um and then by the way if you don't know this which i hope you do um the insurance breast pump is free it literally ships it for free and everything and it came with a heck ton of milk collector bags like the kind that you put in the freezer um 
I have so many I will honestly probably never go through them all um that's just for me I'm a just enougher when it comes to supply um if you have an oversupply maybe you would go through all of them but they sent me a ton of those bags and then I keep getting emails saying hey we'll send you more um for free and I'm like I really don't need any more but thanks um so there's that 35 weeks November 24th um it is the day after Thanksgiving um I had my last wedding of the year the week prior um and at that point I was honestly like thank god because my back was killing me for two days after um I was definitely ready to be done at that point and so I'm very glad that that last wedding was the last wedding um I have five I had five photo shoots left in the year um at that point so that was exciting I'm pretty sure I ended up canceling one of them um that now looking back I probably could have done but was for the best that I didn't um because everything that I did just created backlog that meant I would have to edit um once baby got here so I'm glad that I didn't and I was just able to enjoy my holiday season as much as possible <laughs> um so there is that um and I couldn't eat very much um especially during Thanksgiving, which was a bummer, um, because it literally, like, with how big my baby was at that point, I literally just didn't have the space. Um, whenever I ate, I felt like I was limited, and I got full so fast, because I could just tell my stomach was not small, or just smushed, like, there was no space for my stomach to expand, um, so I definitely could not eat nearly as much, um, as I am, I was normally, um, my belly was growing much bigger and faster um i really got big in my third trimester especially towards the end it's so interesting because you go your entire pregnancy like with little bump dates and things like that but really for me i did not start making large strides until that third trimester especially the end um i also never really got swollen um until the very end and when i say the very end i literally mean like the last two weeks is when i started to get really swollen um and it's so crazy because it happened so gradually i didn't notice and then a couple weeks after delivery when the swelling went down and i looked back at pictures i was like oh my god like the change like my face looked significantly slimmer um to where i was like who am i i looked deflated it was very bizarre um but my belly button was stretching it never got flat or became an Audi but you could tell it was being stretched um, I was 173 pounds and really it was all belly um, and haven't hadn't grown anywhere else um, I just didn't get any stretch marks um, during pregnancy at all um, which I was really expecting it I didn't do anything to prevent it so I'm just gonna put that out there right now don't ask me what I did to prevent stretch marks because I didn't um, I'm very that's that's one area where it comes to like body positivity or neutrality I guess where like I just didn't care like it, it I was fully prepared for it to happen um it's the mark of me having grown a human I think it's it's a beautiful thing I don't think it's shameful or it needs to be hidden um but I just happened to not get it so I didn't do anything to prevent it um I think it's just genetics even though I'm pretty sure my mom did get stretch marks I, I really don't know why I didn't um but I didn't um and so yeah um my room was set up um all the baby shower stuff was put away at this point um and we began to prep for delivery um my midwife and this is what how many weeks is this this is 35 weeks that i'm talking about at this point also my midwife sent me a home birth shopping list um and it was kind of cool i can put in an image of what the shopping list looked like here um and this is kind of the things that she advised that we purchased to prepare for the home birth um it had things like a new water hose so that you know there was no like um bacteria or anything from a previous water host to fill up the birth pool um receiving blankets um lots of like puppy pads almost to put down everywhere um a fishnet to you know catch out potential poop if you poop during labor delivery and fun fact i did um so yeah um however i i don't know i found the, the shopping list to be quite fascinating um and so I, maybe you find that interesting I, i'll plug it in here so you can see it um and at this point we bought all of that stuff um we made a birth playlist 
um, I honestly get chills every time I hear it um, I did not actually listen to it during the delivery itself but I did listen to it as I was in early labor or pre-labor especially while I was doing the mile circuit and all of that and honestly it just played in my mind throughout my whole delivery even though I, I didn't actually listen to it during the pushing um and then I was embracing the naps at this point. I had been reading Ina May's Guide to Childbirth, which I cannot recommend, whether you're doing a home birth, unmedicated birth, medicated birth, or hospital birth, or um, C-section, whatever your birth plan is, I highly recommend reading Ina May's Guide to Childbirth. I think it's an amazing resource, not only to hear a bunch of birth stories, um, positive and i'm not gonna say negative ones but just like positive birth stories that went as planned and then things that maybe didn't go as planned or that was a little bit more complicated um i just feel like it does a really great job of erasing some of the fear and unknown surrounding birth because you hear so many different outcomes so many different paths and it also is very helpful for like when we were having complications in our delivery um and we had to start trying different methods of pushing or things to boost oxytocin like nothing that my midwife was had recommended was strange to me because i kind of was primed because i read this so i, I can't recommend that book enough um just to kind of increase your knowledge of what to do in delivery um and the different ways that you can get a baby out of your body all right hey look who's joining us <laughs> and by that that means we're gonna be zooming through the last part of this video. Um, I wanted to relieve Robert because he's been with him for quite some time. <laughs> so I wanted to give him a little bit of a break. Um, and I'm almost done here. So, where did I leave off? He's just gonna sit on my lap and join us. Okay, so where I left off was at this point, I was also hoping to start perineal massages and raspberry leaf tea soon. Um, I personally am not a tea person. I bought the raspberry leaf tea, um, didn't like it, decided I wasn't gonna put myself through that. So I didn't drink it. Um, also, the more research I did into it, it doesn't actually speed up labor or like speed up anything. It just tones your uterus um, or it can tone your uterine muscles. Um, so I just didn't think it was worth me chugging this down when I just don't like the taste of tea and before you tell me have you tried other teas I've tried lots of tea I just don't like tea I'm sorry um perennial massages I tried it like once or twice um I had my husband help me I tried it um and I really just wasn't a fan I found it to be very uncomfortable um and I don't know it was just very uncomfortable for me. It's raining pretty pretty hard outside. Um, it was just very uncomfortable to me. Um, and so I did it like once or twice and then that was it. Um, and I didn't tear. Mind you, um, I didn't push him all the way up my body myself. But I did a lot of pushing. Four hours of pushing and didn't tear. So, um, And he came very, very, very close to being delivered. So, again, I don't really know if I believe if you can affect your chances of tearing or it's just you're gonna or you're not I don't know um, but that's just my experience um, at this point I was emotionally ready for the baby to come and now I was really excited at the thought of Christmas with him um, that didn't end up happening I did have a Christmas outfit and everything just in case but some of us just didn't want to come for Christmas we wanted to come in 2024 and so definitely we came um, all right 37 weeks four days at 37 weeks I squeezed my nipples um, and by that I mean like hand express that's just what I literally wrote um, down and started to notice moisture um, colostrum um, God bless you um, so at that point I started to collect the colostrum I bought a bunch of one milliliter syringes um, off of Amazon and I honestly still have some left over and every day I would hand express into a spoon and then slurp it on up with the syringe and I'm so glad that I did because um, 
I wish I did it more. I just didn't have that crazy of a supply before that time. So I really was only able to do so much. Um, but I'm glad that I did because then when he was in the NICU, I was able to have somebody go home, um, grab all of the syringes, put it in, an, in a cooler bag, and then I could bring them to the NICU and they were able to feed him using the colostrum I had previously expressed um, to kind of offset the amount of formula he was getting. Mind you, at the end of the day, did he get a lot of formula? Yes. Is that totally fine? Yes. But um, it was just nice that it was able to be put to use and it was able to kind of give him like milk or colostrum for me, even though I wasn't able to see him in those first 24 hours. So um, not full 24, but you know what I mean. Um, so I'm really happy that I did. If I had another child, I would probably try to start. I would probably amp up the amount of times that I was hand expressing. Um, even though you, you can't control when you start to produce colostrum or not. Some people never do. So um, I'm just grateful that I was able to. Um, breathing became more difficult uh, when sitting down and my birth ball was what I started sitting on whenever I was working. I basically ditched my desk chair and just sat on the ball all the time. All the time doing hip circles and it was just the more comfortable thing for me um, in general. And then at 36 weeks, I started to see a chiropractor to help with lower back pain and hip pain, as well as pelvic alignment for the baby to be delivered. Um, I'm not convinced that it really helped at all, um, but it was cool to go. <laughs> I don't think, and it was very inexpensive. I paid $30 every, every time I went due to insurance, but I think if I had to pay more than that, I probably wouldn't go. I had lots of cervical and pelvic pressure. Um, I began sitting on the birth ball at 36 weeks. We had my home visit with my midwife on December 11th, and Julie, my dog, did so, so well. Um, and we basically walked through our space that we were going to be birthing in and just the overall flow of events. Um, at 35 weeks, so we're going back again. Sorry, my notes are a little out of whack. Um, we took a strep slash group B test and that was negative. Um, we picked our pediatrician and we bought all of our home birth supplies. All right. I have him in his little bouncy chair beneath me right now. Um, all right. So moving on. So now we're like really close to delivery. We're like two, two and a half ish, three weeks off from delivery now. Um, right now I was saying that my lower back pain was brutal. Um, sleeping became very uncomfortable and my hips hurt at night from sleeping on my sides. Um, swelling with three exclamation points. Lightning crotch was getting more and more intense. Um, I actually went to Epcot, uh, two weeks before I was due, two weeks before he arrived. Um, and whew, every once in a while I would take a step and it would be a shooting pain. I would like squeeze Robert's hand. He was like, oh no. <laughs> um, I was really hoping that that Disney trip would induce labor, but it did not, but that's fine. Um, we had a good time. And so um, I was just overall very uncomfortable at that point, very ready for baby to come and get the show on the road. Um, I only sat on the birthing ball. Again, if you can't tell, that was a big thing. Um, did lots of hip circles on the ball. I took lots of walks um, and lots of long walks and did the curb, um, the curb exercise where you like step up on a curb and you just kind of like let your other foot drop. Um, and lots of squats. Um, I did not have any contractions until January 1st, which is when pre-labor began for me. Um, so some people have contractions and Braxton Hicks like a but like weeks and weeks before. That was not the case. I did not have contractions until it was time. I just didn't. Um, so it became a little frustrating towards the very end because I was like, I have no signs of labor. Like nothing is telling me that I am going to labor anytime soon. Um, I just didn't. Like, I, I didn't have any signs that anything was happening until it was happening. Um, so I didn't have any contractions until January 1st. I had him on January 3rd. Um, I started losing chunks of my mucus plug five days before birth. Um, it didn't come out all at once. It was definitely chunks. And um, I can't decide if I put a picture of that in here. I'm like, how much is oversharing? If you are curious as to what your mucus plug, what mucus plug looks like, just Google it. Um, it basically looks like bloody snot, like really yucky bloody snot, um, and like just thick discharge, um, that just happened to have like a vein of blood in it almost, um, and I just was losing a chunk starting five days before, um, so I knew that I was dilating because that was happening. Um, I did get one cervical check, um, and I found it to be very painful. 
and I was not dilated at all when that happened and it really honestly the cervical check can do nothing for you but tell you how far dilated you are but like it does it's not an accurate estimation of when you're actually going to go into labor so I just I didn't get it again but I decided not to get it again um so me losing chunks of my mucus plug is what told me that um we were dilating and things were probably gonna be happening pretty soon little did I know it would be five days later I thought it would be much sooner than that um increasingly emotional and the anticipation was intense um oh that one cervical check i got was on december 21st again i was not dilated at all didn't have him until january 3rd um did all things to induce everything you can think of to induce labor was done um did not work um and i still had a lot of energy i went to disney on december 18th and our last um pre-baby date was new year's eve so that was the day before pre-labor began um, I thought baby would come at any time, but truly had no intense signs until early labor began on New Year's Day. So that is my third trimester recap. Um, thank you guys for watching. Um, really at that point, that's everything up until pre-labor began. So anything that is basically those three days before he arrived, um, I'm considering that part of like my labor and delivery experience, which you can watch in the birth vlog. Um, if you would like like a narrated version of that or maybe a QA and a about it, I'm happy to do that. Um, but that's basically everything leading up to the labor and delivery experience. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and that it kind of gives you some knowledge or something to think about. I wouldn't form expectations based on somebody else's experience, but just to kind of give prime your brain um, for what you may or may not experience in your third trimester. Um, so yeah, that, that was my experience. Overall, I had a really positive pregnancy, even with the, you know, minor inconveniences that come with literally growing a human being. Um, but yeah, so thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoy and lots more videos to come. I'm kind of like rebirthing this channel, <laughs> rebirthing the channel. Um, so, um, but still trying to figure out what I want it to be. It's not going to be, uh, he won't be featured a ton. It's not going to be about him. Um, it's just about my life as a human being who just also happens to be a mom that's not my whole personality um and yeah so there's that so if you enjoy that come along but thanks for watching and i will see you guys later bye